Hello and thanks for watching. This is a tutorial on making the So Chic Handbags Wendy Satchel. See the video description below to get the pattern and don't forget to subscribe. See the top of the pattern instructions for directions on cutting out your fabric. Now let's get started. First, we'll work on the top tab. You'll need vinyl, your top tab paper pattern piece, and one magnetic snap. Trim the seam allowance from your top tab paper pattern piece and use it to cut out one vinyl piece. Install the male side of your magnetic snap on the right side of the top tab. It should be 1.25 inches from the bottom of the tab as shown. Spread glue on the wrong side of your top tab piece. Be sure to distribute the glue all the way to the edges. Place the top tab piece on the wrong side of your scrap piece of vinyl. Let it dry for a few hours to overnight per your glue manufacturer's instructions. Once dry, top stitch at about 1 8 of an inch from the edge on all sides of your top tab. Trim off the excess scrap vinyl. Your top tab piece should look like this. You will make the handle tabs in the same way. Glue your handle tabs to a scrap piece of vinyl. Let them dry. Now top stitch the handle tabs as you did the top tab and trim off the excess vinyl. Depending on your vinyl's backing, you may not like the raw edges of your top and handle tab pieces. Use leather edge or acrylic paint to coat the edges. Carefully paint the raw edges of your tab pieces using a Q-tip, brush, or specialty leather edge paint roller. Set your tabs aside. Next, we'll work on the handles. You'll need your handle pieces and four O-rings. Pull each handle through two O-rings. Place the ends of the two handle pieces together, right sides of the fabric facing. Clamp in place. Sew the ends together along the 0.5 inch seam allowance. Now fold back the seam allowances. Top stitch them down at about 1 8 of an inch from the center seams using an extended stitch length. Place the two seams together, right sides of the fabric facing in the center of the handle. Pull the O-rings to either side of the handle. Sew one long side of the handle using a regular stitch length, stopping at about 1 to 1.5 inches away from the O-rings. Open your handle and fold in the unsewn seam allowances on either side of your handle so that they meet the sewn seam allowance in the middle of the handle. Repeat folding in your seam allowances along the length of your handle, even through the O-rings. Clamp in place. Top stitch all along the perimeter of the handle using an extended stitch length. Top stitch the unsewn folded in edge first, then across the O-rings and the other long side at 1 8 of an inch from the edge. Repeat for the other handle. Set your handles aside. Next, we'll work on the external bag. You'll need your two external side panels, external body panels, and interfacing pieces. Clamp the interfacing to your external side panels on the wrong side of the fabric. Now sew the wide flat bottom edges of the panels together using the 0.5 inch seam allowance. Now trim off the seam allowance from the interfacing. Fold back the seam allowances of the vinyl and top stitch them down on either side of the center seam, 1 8 of an inch from the center with an extended stitch length. It should look like this on the other side. Place the interfacing behind the external body panels and clamp them in place. Before you attach your top tab piece to the body panels, you can take this opportunity to mark where your rhinestone or other embellishment will be. Arrange your rhinestones on the side of your top tab without the magnetic snap. Place them per your design aesthetic. Now mark the placement of your rhinestones on your tab and take a picture so you don't forget. Now you are ready to attach the top tab to one body panel. Place the flat end of the top tab in the center of the curved top edge of the body panel. Place the flat end 2.5 to 3 inches below the bottom of the curve as shown. Sew the tab in place using an extended stitch length. Be sure to back stitch. I sewed along the original top stitching as well as 0.5 inches above. You can now begin attaching the body panel to the side panels. Clamp one body panel to the side panel, aligning at the centers first, then the top edges. Then clamp around the curves. You'll have to ease in the curved portions as you would a sleeve on a shirt. You can make relief cuts into the seam allowances to make this a bit easier. Sew the body panel to the side panel along the 0.5 inch seam allowance. Attach the other body panel in the same way. 
you can make perpendicular relief cuts into the curved sections of the seams to help the seams lay better when turning the bag right side out. Snip right up to the sewing line, but do not cut through your sewing. You can also trim off your seam allowances altogether. Turn the external bag right side out. It should look something like this. Set aside the external bag. It's time to work on the lining. You'll need one lining fabric body piece, two pocket pieces, and your zippers. Pin one pocket piece to one lining body panel piece, right sides of the fabric facing. The pocket should be 1.5 to 2 inches below the top of the body panel and centered. Now draw a rectangle 1 inch below the top of the pocket and 1 inch away from either side. The rectangle should be 0.5 inches high. Now draw two triangles in the corners of the rectangles pointing inwards. Draw a line in the center connecting the points of the triangles. Sew at a regular stitch length around the perimeter of the rectangle. Now cut along the center line and along the legs of the triangles. Try to get as close to the corners of the rectangle as possible. Pull the pocket piece through the hole that you made to the other side of the body panel. Iron the window you made flat. Hand or machine sew the open end of your zipper shut. Place the zipper behind the window as shown below. Pin the zipper to the window. Secure the zipper to the window by sewing around the perimeter of the window at about 1 8 of an inch from the edge. Turn the body panel over. Place the other pocket piece on top of the first, right sides of the fabric facing. Sew the pockets together by sewing along the seam allowances on all four sides. Please note you are sewing the pockets together only and not to the body panel. Next up is the top zipper. Get your four zipper panels and 12 plus inch zipper. On the wrong side of the fabric, mark the 0.5, 1.0, and 1.5 inch points from the right and left sides of the zipper panels as shown below. Repeat on all four zipper panel pieces. On the right side of the fabric, place your zipper panel face up along the top edge of one zipper panel piece. Align the end of the zipper to the left edge. Now place another zipper panel piece on top, aligning the long edge. Clamp in place. Place the panel on the sewing machine so that the long end of your zipper is facing the back and the side of the panel with the marks is facing right. Backstitch to the 1 half inch point. Now sew along the length of the panel using a 1 4 inch seam allowance, stopping at the 1 and 1 half or 1 inch point per your preference. If you'd like the zipper slightly away from the seam allowance, stop at one and a half inches. If you want it right up to the seam allowance, stop at one inch. When you reach the one and a half or one inch mark, stop sewing, but keep your needle inserted in the fabric. Lift your sewing foot. Now turn the end of your zipper at 90 degrees, needle still in the fabric. Then lower your sewing foot. Now keep sewing until you reach the 0.5 inch mark. Backstitch. Now sew the short side of the panel along the 0.5 inch seam allowance line. Trim the corner and excess seam allowance. Now go to the other side of the panel. Fold back the 0.5 inch seam allowance as shown on both sides. Now fold the panel back, turning it right side out. Clamp it in place. Turn the first corner right side out. Use a dull pointed object to push out the corner. Top stitch along both sides and along the zipper. Repeat for the other zipper panel on the other side. Now we need to make a cap for the long end of your zipper. Cut a two by three inch rectangle from scraps. Fold the scrap in half widthwise right sides of the fabric facing. Now fold back the side opposite the fold about 0.25 inches on both sides. Sew the sides of the piece forming a pocket slightly wider than the width of your zipper. Trim the excess seam allowance. Turn the piece right side out. Use a dull pointed object to push out the corners. Place the cap on the end of your zipper. If you have an especially long zipper, you can trim it first. My zipper extends about five inches. Top stitch the cap in place. Get your lining body panels and top band pieces. With your zipper panel facing up, center it on the top edge of one lining piece. Now place the top band on top right sides of the fabric facing. The bottom of the top band piece should be centered and aligned with the top of the body panel and zipper. Clamp in place. Sew all three pieces together along the 0.5 inch seam allowance. Now fold your top band up. Top stitch it down at about 1 8 of an inch from the seam you just sewed. Repeat on the other side by attaching the other lining body panel and top band to the other side of the zipper panel. 
Now we'll work on the lining side panel. You'll need the side band and lining side panel pieces. Remove the seam allowances from the paper pattern and trace them on the wrong sides of the side panel pieces. Place the side bands and lining side panel pieces together, right sides of the fabric facing, and clamp in place. Starting from the center V, sew the pieces together along the seam allowance on both sides. Cut into the seam allowance of the V to help the pieces lay better. The panel should look something like this. Fold the side band up and top stitch it down 1 8 of an inch from the seam line. Repeat for the other side panel. Place your two pieces right sides together. Sew the panels together along the bottom seam allowance as you did on the external bag. Pin or clamp the finished lining side panel piece to the lining body panels. Sew the lining fabric body and side panels together as you did the external bag. However, this time, leave a six to seven inch opening on the bottom of one side so that you can turn the bag right side out later after attaching the external bag. Finally, use your paper pattern top band piece to trace the seam allowance. This will help with accuracy when sewing the lining to the external bag. Get your external bag. Open the top zipper of your lining all the way and pull the inside out lining over the external bag. Line up the top seams. Sew the top edge of the lining and external bag together along the 0.5 inch seam allowance using your tracings as guidelines. Open flat or trim the seams at the corners to reduce bulk. Make relief cuts into the curved seam allowances. Cut close to and perpendicular to your sewing lines. Cut off most of the seam allowance from the top corners of the bag. Use the hole in your lining to turn your bag right side out. Pull your external bag through the hole in your lining. Use a dull pointed object to push out the corners of the bag. Carefully top stitch the top edge of the bag using an extended stitch length. Now we need to install your magnetic snap. Pull down your top tab to the front of the bag to find the right location to install and mark it. Use the hole in your lining for access to install the female side of your magnetic snap. Get your handles, handle tabs, and hole punch. Fold one handle over the top posts of the bag. The tab should be angled and aligned to the side seam of the body panel. Make sure the tab is matching in length, front to back, and that there is enough room at the top for your O-ring, about 2.25 to 2.5 inches. Use your punch or a sharp object to punch all the way through the tabs and bag body. This tab is now your template. Mark your other tabs to match. Push your rivets or Chicago screws through one half of your tab and the body of the bag. Pull the other side of the tab through the O-ring of your handle. Now fold your tab down in the back and push your Chicago screws or rivets through. Install your screws or rivets per your manufacturer's instructions. Repeat to attach the handles on all four corners. Your bag should look like this. Pull out your lining so we can close the hole. Fold in the seam allowances and pin the hole shut. Sew, regular or slip stitch the seam closed. Finally, we attach your rhinestones. Use something to elevate your top tab so that it lays flat. Get your glue and rhinestones. Arrange your rhinestones as you did before using the markings as a guide. Glue your rhinestones in place and let them dry. Enjoy your new bag.